Hi, how you doing out there? Hey, I want to show you 23 things that you can do this year that'll get your guitar playing moving in a positive direction, a direction of learning and conquering this instrument. 23 simple things that I think will get you further on down the line. Hey, number one is get involved with Guitar College. Now, every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I do a live stream. If you can't make it then, you can always watch the replay. But if you join in with us, you can pose questions and they can be answered. And you can share some of the same uh, concerns and questions that a lot of other guys have just like you. So if you could get involved at that level, I think it will help you. I've got a lot of good testimonies about, hey, I, I discovered something new just by watching your live stream. So make a commitment. Hey, Thursdays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, come and join me for a live stream. If you can't be then, Watch it on the replay. Number two, the second thing that you can do is find the right material. A lot of guys want to move in a direction. They know what they want to learn, but they can't seem to find the right material. Or they don't have the necessary fundamentals down that can advance them. So I believe I can help you with that with the Guitar College Library. But it's very important for you to find the right material. You know, one of the things, and we're going to touch on this several times, is practicing the same things over and over again, looking for a new result. It just doesn't happen. So somehow you have to find the material that's going to move your playing forward. And of course, you've got to work that plan as well. So number two, be on the lookout for the right material. Now, uh, Guitar College, hopefully, can point you in that direction. Number three, track your practice. What does that mean? It means when you sit down to practice and you, you already have an outline of what you are going to practice. And then as you do it, you're going to write down that you practiced it. So the night before your practice session, I want you to write out, and if, what does it take? Maybe a minute, write out what you're going to do, and then the next morning, work on it. And then put a check mark by it that you've done it, and prepare for your next practice session. So often we sit down to practice, and we're looking for the material to do, and we're looking you know, for a place to do it. We drag our guitar out. You know, all this takes time. What you want is an effective practice session right away. So you've got to sit down with the material in front of you and you know what you're going to practice. That's number two. So you want to track your practice so you can look back over the week and say, oh yeah, Monday I did this, I did this. Tuesday I did this, I did this. You know, you can see that you're moving ahead, okay? So sometimes you have to look behind to see if you've moved ahead. Very important, so track your practice. Number four, make a commitment to get better this year. So how do you do that? Every commitment, what does that mean? Well, generally it means you're gonna have to commit financially as well. Not only your time, but you're gonna have to make some kind of commitment to an organized program. So um, I do have, as you know, I don't want this to be just a sales video. It's not. But you do have to make some kind of commitment to something in order for you to move forward. Okay? You're going to have to find the material somewhere. I have the Jazz Guitar Improv course. I have the Guitar College Library. All that is important material 
that can help you advance. Okay, but you're going to have to make a commitment. And if it's not with my material, let it be with somebody else's. But don't just let another year go by thinking, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should do that or I'll do that someday. I want you to think of something important here. Think of this. Think of two or three years from now. Look at your playing. Think where it's going to be and say to yourself, what would I regret three years from now if I don't do today? What, what are going to be some of my regrets? I, you know, I can look back and I think, God, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have done that. All right, if you're, if you're looking back at what you wish you would have done, think about five years or, or three years from now. Are you going to still be wishing that? So make a commitment to move ahead. Number five, get the program banned in the box. Band the Box enables you to put out chord progressions, to play with, they have some fantastic, I don't know how they do it, fantastic sequencing and real players playing music that you can join in and play with. Very important for you to have that. You can write out chord changes and you can select what style, you can select the tempo, you can select what instruments you want played, and then you're able to play with them. It's a very powerful program. It enables you to loop, put things in different keys. It's amazing. Now, there's another program called iReal Pro that can do quite almost the same thing, but not quite as good. Okay, you can't alter things the way you can with Band in a Box. I would suggest that you get that program, and you can find it at guitarcollege.net. And get that program and start learning how to use it. It's not that hard. And by the way, I have tracks already prepared in, in a lot of different jazz tunes, jazz standards. All you have to do is put the tracks in the band in the box and then you can play them and then slow them down, alter the keys and alter the form, loops at different sections. So it's a real powerful program that will really benefit you. Number six, practice more. Easy to say, isn't it? Yeah, this year practice more. All right, so what does that mean? Well, here's what I'd like you to do. You make a commitment to, that has boundaries. So when you say, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna practice 20 minutes, but no more than an hour. This is very important. So you have an upper and a lower boundary on your practice time. <clears throat> Why is that important? Well, because generally what happens is people sit down and they'll practice for an hour. Or they'll sit down and practice for a half an hour, and it turns out to be two hours. Now it's all well and good, but what happens the next day? Oh, well, I practiced yesterday for two hours. Today I really don't have time. I'm going to skip today. Mm, that does it. It's unfortunate, but it's not in your best interest to do that. So, what is proven to be more helpful is to have several times throughout the day where you can sit down and do smaller increments of time. So, put uh, 20 minutes, no longer than 40 minutes, something like that. Make sure you have a cutoff time, but do it several times a day. You can, everybody can sit down and say, okay, I'm going to run through this song. Another way to do it is, I'm going to run through this song five times today. Okay, do it twice in the morning, twice in the afternoon, once at night. Very important. Those small bits of time throughout the day. So that's how you're able to practice more. If you watch TV, have that guitar in hand if possible, okay? So practice more. And I don't mean just say that, I mean schedule it. Here's number seven, take private lessons. Okay, so you could take private lessons uh, in person at a music store or if somebody you, you might find through the college or, or uh, through some other player that you know, or you could go 
with a Zoom lesson or a Skype lesson, but take private lessons. Somebody can show you something that might take years for you to discover, and they'll show it to you in 10 minutes. How important is that? Okay. Think of guitar playing as being, a, let's say you're going to be a doctor. Well, you have to go to school to do that, don't you? You have to study. Same thing. So look, at if you want to be good at guitar, take some private lessons. I offer Skype lessons. Many of my guitar playing friends do too. And there's private lessons throughout, uh, probably in your hometown. Take them, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be your complete source of information. And it probably shouldn't be. But it makes you accountable. It makes you accountable to when you show up for your next lesson that you got to know your lesson or you're going to look like an idiot. Okay, so it gives you that motivation and it gives you accountability. Number eight, it's really simple. Play your guitar for somebody, your family member, your wife, your kids, your next door neighbor, anybody but try to do it on a weekly basis whatever you learn on this try to you know say okay i'm going to play it for somebody you know what happens the palms get sweaty you get nervous and that's a good thing because that's what happens when you go out and perform and so you need to build that performance muscle okay and so it gives you the reward of playing now, you're going to screw up, and that's fine. That gives you motivation for practicing more and fine-tuning a song. Okay? But play for somebody. Share your playing. Very important. Doesn't have to be for money. It's just play for your family, your spouse. Hey, honey, look at, look at what I learned. I learned this cool chord here. Look at this chord. They'll look like, you know, what? But it gets you, it gets you uh, thinking about performance. Okay, so always make sure you play for somebody on a regular basis. Here's one that's fun. Number nine, attend a workshop or a conference. You know, with my students, we have a uh, guitar college workshop once a year up in Yosemite. And the alumni keep coming back over and over and over again. And why do they do that? Well, number one, it's fun. Number two, it's educational. You can, and you learn so much. Not just book learning things, but stuff that can't be taught unless you're playing with a group and critiqued by a professional. So we have wonderful teachers that help me. And uh, it's, it's just a blast. You'll have the best time of your life. And uh, you, you wake up in the morning playing the guitar and you, you play till night at night and go to bed. And you'll have a wonderful time. You'll learn a lot and you'll learn what you need to learn. Okay. So if you can't come to ours, there are several throughout the country attend a conference of some type that's going to get you playing with other people. It's going to be fun. It'll get you out of your comfort zone, out of your house, and you'll learn what you need to learn. So here's one. Get a gig. All right. It doesn't, ha doesn't even have to be for money. It doesn't have to be for money. The point is you're out playing using what you've learned. How important is that? Okay, if you can play for like, let's say you're a solo performer, if you could do 40 minutes, okay, which is about 10 songs, you could go out and get a gig at a wine bar or a coffee house probably. Now, one of the most successful ways of doing this is to create a gig. Go to a place and say, hey, would you mind if I played in here? Let me audition. I'd like to play here next Tuesday night. 
I uh, I play. I don't. I won't disturb your customers. Hopefully, they'll like it. You don't have to pay me. I just want to see what you, their reaction, and uh, I want to entertain. They'll generally say, "Yeah, what do I got to lose? Sure, come on in." And uh, you know what happens? You end up creating your own gig. I've seen it time and time again at wine bars, coffee houses. Now, it doesn't have to be that. You know, you can also go and entertain and perform at a senior home, at a hospital. Very important. How important is that? A library, church, okay? Very important. Um, you know, you could maybe play a little church music, a little bit of music as people are coming out of the church. Ask your church if you would mind doing that, if they would mind if you could do that. Okay, S simple little things, baby steps. Take baby steps and get a gig. If you're playing with somebody, it's a lot easier to get a gig. If you have a duo or a trio, okay, it's, it's not, you're not so exposed. Or if you're using tracks, get your tracks out and just go set up and play with your tracks, okay? Create a gig. It's a wonderful way that you can use your instrument to entertain, and you'll feel good about it. Here's a very important one. Get a musical guitar playing buddy. Actually, they don't even have to be guitar. It could be piano, any, any other instrument. But get a musician friend. You've got to make the effort to get a musician friend. You don't want to be solo all the time, okay? You don't want to do this thing alone. You don't want to be the Lone Ranger. You know, if you have coals in a fire, if you take one out that, and set it on the side, without the rest of the coals there, work, that one will go out real quick. But together, the coals will burn for a long time. And that's how music is. If you have a friend or a band or a group that you can play with, how important is that? That's very important to keep your enthusiasm going. And it's so much fun to share your knowledge and they can share their knowledge with you. Okay, just have fun. So get a friend to play with, okay? And... Uh, you know, you can even do that on Zoom, okay? If you have a relative or something that's into guitar or something, communicate with them and, uh, or a friend that you, you, maybe you moved away. Communicate with them and try to talk with them once a week to play with a friend. So make a friend, a musical friend of some sort. Make the effort to do that. The next, number 12, it's almost obvious but practice something new always. Practice something new uh, always. <laughs> you know what I mean? So often we sit down and practice and you play the same old thing over and over and over again and over again. I'm guilty of the same thing. But I find if I make myself learn something new every day, it sparks enthusiasm and creativity. So it's, it's, it doesn't have to be a, a big long piece. It could be just one half part of a lick, an idea of something that you didn't know how to do the day before. All right, so when you have your lessons that you're, you're learning from your teacher or some course, that's all good, you're gonna work on that but then I want you to take the time to explore, to find something new. And you can do it on YouTube. It's really easy. Watch somebody play and try to figure out what they're doing. But just a short tippet. I'm not talking about the whole solo of 32 bar solo. I'm talking about one measure or half a measure. Just a couple of notes. But find something new. That is so important. Okay? So just remember that within your practice session, make time, four or five minutes, to find something new. Got it? 
Number 13, this is super important. Teach, okay? I want you to start teaching guitar. Why do you do that? Well, here's what I like to say. When a teacher teaches a student, not, it's not just the student that learns, it's the teacher that learns. When you start teaching, it solidifies your education. It also shows the holes in your education. Now, you might think, I'm not good enough to teach. Well, you know, to a beginner, you're an expert. Okay, if you've been playing longer than six months or a year, to somebody else, you're an expert. All right, so learn how to teach and then teach. You don't have to have a full giant schedule, just teach one or two students. Put an ad in, but I want you to charge money for it because, well, it puts more importance on what you do. And when you charge money for something, it, it's like it makes this more important. What you do, it's more important than giving it away for free. But when you do teach, you're going to inspire somebody, and you're going to um, you're going to get somebody else interested. And so it's your goal to keep them interested. And in what will happen? you'll be interested. So you don't have to have a lot of students, but teach, share what you've learned. When you give away what you've learned, there's room for more for you to get. So remember that, give it away and you'll get a lot more in, in return. Here's a good one, buy a new guitar. Have you, have you ever like been like, you know, not motivated and then you go into a music store one day and you find this guitar and you think oh that's so cool and you buy it and now all of a sudden you're practicing all the time well you know you're turned on by the instrument and so how important is that so it's almost it's worth it, its weight it's not just a nice guitar that but it's inspiring you to learn and to practice more so not only a new guitar, a new amp, a new mu music stand, a new metronome, a new recorder. Buy something new. You know, I demo guitars all over YouTube, right? And I sell, and sell them and I find them for my students. So keep abreast of what I've got because I'm going to give you, I'll, I'll get you something really nice. But sometimes... Don't look at it as a bad thing or I'm wasting money. Generally, you know, if you buy right, you're always going to get your money out of your guitar. You might even make a couple bucks here and there. All right? But if you always want to have a guitar that inspires you. You want to have an instrument that you're excited about. Okay? And boy, that does a big uh, boost to your enthusiasm on learning this instrument. So, don't be afraid to buy something new. All right, how many guitars does a guitar player need? Really, huh? One more. Tip number 15, go to a live performance. Make it a point to at least once a month, twice a month, to get out and see people play. How that is so important. Get up close. See exactly what they're doing. Be inspired by them, okay? You know, you learn a lot by watching other people. Now, of course, you can look on YouTube and all that, but there's nothing more inspiring or motivating is to see somebody play live, to be up close and see them. Now, sometimes... You can see him and you think, ah, oh, God, he's not very good. I always learn something from everybody I see. Some little tiny thing maybe I can use in my teaching. Okay, but I'm always looking and being inspired.
to see somebody play. Now, <clears throat> if they have a tip jar, make sure you tip them. Also, what does this do? This supports the guitar community in your area. That is super important because you're going to become part of that community. So when you're out there, when you go to a restaurant to see somebody play, okay, buy the food, pay for the wine, give them a tip, okay, watch them play, meet them, talk to them. Very important. Be the first to also offer up a friendship, okay? So you want to become friends with these people, too. Very important. So support your guitar community locally. You don't always have to go see the Eagles or Paul McCartney or, you know, whoever. Just the local blues band down the road is good enough, okay? But get out there and support your guitar community. Number 16, and this can be painful, record yourself. Always record yourself. At the end of your practice sessions, I would just make a quick recording of you doing something. And luckily nowadays, you know, you have a phone there. You can just hit audio record. It'll probably uh, put the date stamp on it. Listen back and you can see how you can improve yourself. Recording yourself is like looking in the mirror and it can be painful, I know, <clears throat> or on a video camera. But recording yourself is an educational thing. Here's what happens when you record yourself. As soon as you hit that record button, you start to sweat. Why do you do that? It happens to me all the time. It's because you're going to make a judgment call or somebody's going to make a judgment call on your playing. Now, <clears throat> you have to work that muscle. You have to work that emotional muscle because eventually you're going to be wanting to record a lot. So record every day. That does another thing. It dates where you are. A month you can come back and listen to it and you think, Boy, I, have I grown since then. Boy, I can play that a lot better. Or you might come back and say, you know what? That was pretty good. When we're up close and personal with whatever we're playing at the moment, we pick out every nuance, everything that's bad. We never, look, we never hear the good. We only hear the bad. But when you give it about a month or two, you go back and listen and you think, well, that, that wasn't too bad. So that is a very important thing to do. So make it a habit of recording yourself, if not daily, every other day, every third day. Really important. You've got a time stamp and you can hear what you're doing. So make a habit of recording yourself. Number 17, listen to lots of different players. When you hear music, don't just listen to the same stuff over and over and over again. Make yourself branch out and listen to guitar players. Well, not even just guitar players. Listen to all instruments. Listen to sax players. Listen to piano players. I've been listening to Benny Goodman lately. <laughs> I don't know why. I just got stuck on that. But I enjoy it. And I can hear what they're doing, and it's, it's, I can internalize some of the things that, that he's doing. I like, you know, of course, listen to all the guitar players, all the, the heavyweights, but also listen to other, other people, other people on the Internet, on YouTube. Listen to them. Make a point of listening to somebody new all the time. Okay, branch out. Listen to different styles of music. Listen to classical music. Listen to uh, Baroque music. Listen to symphonies. Listen to jazz. Listen to rock. Listen to blues. Listen to bluegrass. It goes on and on. Listen to something new. Okay, make a point. You don't have to do a whole listening session of an hour and a half. Just listen to one thing just one thing. If you listen to one thing new, 
at the end, every day, at the end of a year, you've listened to 365 new things. That's the power. That's the power of it all right there. Listen to something new and try to remember their names. <laughs> okay, that's really important. Okay, I want to make a point of this. This is number 18, and that is we've touched on this, and I've been saying this. You have to practice daily. It has to be every day. You can't miss a day. You certainly can't miss two days. You can't miss three days. There's a saying, if you miss one day, you notice a difference in your play. You miss two days, the people you play with notice a difference. You miss three days, everybody knows. So make a point of practicing every day. That should be part of your morning routine. When you get up in the morning, make a point of practicing playing. Doesn't it have to be practice of new material? Make sure you got the hand, your hands on the instrument every day doing something, playing. I tell people, get a get, couple guitars, have them in different places, even put one in your garage. When you go out there, pick that guitar up and play one little thing, okay? Tell your wife you need as many guitars as there are rooms. So when you walk in the room, you pick that the guitar, you play a couple of little things and you put it away. Make sure you are practicing and at least playing every day. Small units of time throughout a day is more important than big long time in one period. Let me let me make a, another point of this. If I practice three 20 minute periods a day, that's powerful. That's very powerful. That's almost better than two hours of just sitting there doing the same thing. What happens is when you get done with 20 minutes, your mind, when you, when you walk away, your mind is still working on it. Your mind is still working on it. So make a, sure you practice or play every day. Number 19, take a music class. Okay, they're offered at community colleges, uh, community centers, uh, your local music store. Take some kind of music class, whether it's music appreciation, music theory, a guitar class, whatever it is, take some kind of music class. It could be online, it could be in person. I would prefer if you would do it in person. Why? Because you meet people. This becomes a social instrument now. Okay, this is, gives you something in common with other people. Very important. So take a music class. Learn to play something different than what you already learned. Play. I think that's important. Learn to play the piano. Learn about theory. Whew. Really important. Learn arranging. Learn composition. Take a music class somewhere. They're offered all the time. Okay, it doesn't have to be your mainstay, but it just gets you thinking in a little bit of direction, different direction than just guitar playing. It's a music class, not a guitar class necessarily. You can do that. It's a music class. Try to find it and take one class in the year 2023. There's an easy one. Subscribe to a music magazine. Subscribe to a guitar magazine. Okay, music magazines, what are there? Well, there's Downbeat. Uh, there's probably Keyboard Magazine if you wanted to. You know, there's all, there's a magazine for everything. <clears throat> guitar magazines. Guitar player, acoustic guitar, um, vintage guitar. All of those things get you reading about music or guitar. And it comes in the mail, you got it there in front of you, and take the time to read it, to look through it, and learn something. Remember, you're going to become an expert. Remember, you're a teacher. So one of the things you have to do is to keep researching. So the best way to do that, one way, or anyway, it's not the best, let's say, is to take a music, get a music magazine and read it. 
okay? Really important. So sign up for some kind of magazine or newsletter. It could be online newsletter. Um, jazz guitar today is kind of a neat thing. There's several things you can get. All right, number 21. Here's a fun one. Attend a guitar show. Okay, so they're put on all over the country. You can find them. Uh, there are several of them in California, Florida, Michigan. You'll find one, but attend one. Why is that? I think it, it's exciting to see, number one, the new products that are coming out. They're, they're usually at these shows. Number two, the old products are at the shows as well. Okay, the old guitars. Now you can go there, you, could, you can sell a guitar, you can uh, buy a guitar. And it's so cool to see what is out there and the prices of them. I gotta warn you though, you're gonna say, oh man, I had that guitar in high school, I sold it for, for $200 and now they're selling it for 20,000. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. But you know what? It's fun to go to these things. So even if you have to drive several hours, I think it's worth the drive to get out there and go to a guitar show, meet some like-minded people, and explore the guitar world. And you'll start seeing its history of these old guitars. You're like, wow, I never knew they made this. This is a Charlie Christian pickup? What, what is that? Get educated. So I, th I think it's really neat to attend a guitar show. We exhibit at them from time to time. We used to do them a lot more than before. And um, we met a lot of wonderful people there. So if you get a chance, attend a guitar show. As a matter of fact, make it a goal this year. All right, number 22. Host a jam session at your house. Boy, it sounds like a big commitment, doesn't it? All right, now let's say you've made some friends in the music business, players. Host a time for them to come to your house and have fun and play some music. Oh, sounds hard, doesn't it? It's easy, isn't it? Come on. You know what? Spend a little money, get some refreshments, invite your friends over, once a month for a jam session. Now, you could actually pay somebody to come and to put on a little clinic, okay? A local person that you think is pretty good. Hey man, I want you to come to my house. I've got a couple buddies and friends and they'd love to hear you play and give some thoughts on, on guitar playing and maybe you can show us some things. We'd love to have you and, you know, we'll pay you, I don't know what it is, what the price is. But that's really important. It's really important to have, to build that camaraderie with other players and to host somebody who's, who's a good player. Now, if you, if you don't feel confident with that, and if you have enough room, do a house concert. If you have enough room, in, you know, in the summertime, you can always have them in the backyard. Find a group and host them at your house. Pay the money to have them come in to play in your backyard and invite your neighbors and all your friends. I think you're going to love it. You're going to say, gosh, darn it, I want to do this more. And uh, so, again, make that a goal for 2023 that you're going to host a jam session, or host a, a house concert. Okay, let me know how that goes for you. Okay, here we are, our last tip. And this is a doozy. Stick with something long enough for it to become a habit. Long enough to see if it helps you. Well, you know what happens with all of us is we'll start something and then we drop it. You know, I've heard one person say, you know, my goals for the year is usually my to-do to list for the first week. After that, it's all by the wayside. You have to stick with something long enough to see if it works. If you're doing something on a daily basis, 
practicing small units of time throughout the day, let's say. You have to do it for 21 days for it to be a habit and for it to see if it's working for you. If you're doing something on a weekly basis, give it three months. Okay, if you're going to take guitar lessons or a music class, don't just do it once or twice and blow it off. Stick with it for three months and see if it works. It takes time. It takes hours. Okay? If you're doing something on a monthly basis, give it a year. If you're doing a house concert, try to do it once a month for a year and see you're going to become a pro at it. People are going to love you. All right, so whatever it is that you're going to do, stick with it. Stick with it. Okay, have the tenacity to stick with it, okay? And the courage to pull it through, and uh, you won't regret it. Make sure if you stick with it long enough, you can see if it works for you. If after uh, your daily routine is not working for you after 21 days, after three weeks, throw it away and do another one, okay? But stick with something long enough to give it a chance. Okay, look at I hope you have a wonderful new year, that 2023 is your year, and uh, you make big strides in your playing. I hope this has helped you, and review it often, because I want you to want to see you at the live streams. <laughs> Let's face it, the reason most of us got into jazz guitar is because it looks so fun to improvise. Sure, the pros make it look easy, but those of you who've tried it know it's pretty difficult and very intimidating. There's so much content and it's so it goes over your head a lot. Some guys don't even attempt to learn improv soloing because it looks so hard. Others try and fail and totally give up. I've been playing guitar a long time and I don't improv at all, so. Does this sound like you? If so, it's okay. You're not alone. One of my problems as a student was that I go superficially into many songs, and I think I know. Well, in actual fact, I don't know any of them. But did you know there are secrets to make it much easier? Rich Severson has shown them to thousands of students. He has a proven way of changing your thinking over time. And he's really good about giving you fundamental uh, knowledge and the uh, techniques that, that will really help you progress. It's able to embrace uh, beginners as well as more experienced players. If you thought you could never play improv solos or have tried before and failed, Rich's course, Jazz Guitar Improv, will work for you. What I love most about Rich is the way he's able to break down very complex material into little bite-sized pieces. And he has so many different ideas for approaching a given chord progression. Now when we're talking a blues lick on A minor, we can talk with just the simplest things in mind. In other words, how about this? Ba -bo -ba -ba. That's all we need. Ba -bo -ba -ba. And do it there. Jazz Guitar Improv is a proven, systematic program specifically designed to get players to solo on the fly. The trick? It's all about giving you confidence across the fretboard. It's not so technical that it goes over your head. Like, and I think that's one of the things that I like about his style. Is he's able to sort of, uh, for lack of a better phrase, kind of dumb it down. Rich has a methodical way of changing your thinking over time. He builds your confidence by teaching you the correct way to approach a song if your goal is to play improv solos. There's never a duplication of information. It's continually challenging and yet continually rewarding. One thing is for sure, when you are confident on the fretboard, magical things start happening and that's when the fun really begins.
Rich focuses on six famous jazz standards that will increase your jazz vocabulary and get you playing tasty solos that will impress your friends. I think Rich has a way of feeling, uh, being approachable. And he showed me a couple of easy things to play and sure enough, he got me doing improv for the first time in my life. The longer you wait, the longer you'll be playing the same old things. The time to become a confident jazz soloist is now. Because uh, jazz is complicated, but once you understand how to, um, uh, to improvise and how to use what you already know in a different uh, setting, uh, it, it really opens up a whole new world of, of uh, uh, your ability to improvise and enjoy the jazz, playing jazz music. Sign up for Jazz Guitar Improv today and fulfill your dream of improvising over your favorite songs. Use the promo code RICH on YouTube and instantly save $100. If you don't like it after a few weeks, we'll give you your money back. What do you have to lose? Don't let your dreams of becoming a great jazz improviser go down the drain.